Hello everyone. Welcome to the presentation of operating systems. I am A.B. Satya Prakash from the Department of Maths and Computing, IIT Guwahati. And today we will discuss about the topic file management in Solaris. Let us first begin by taking a look at what all topics we are going to see. First, we'll have a look at the inter, uh, have an introduction to Solaris op as an operating system. Then we'll look at what file management means in general and also in particular with respect to Solaris. Then we'll look at the different kinds of file systems that Solaris supports and we'll try to classify them. After that, we'll try to look at the idea of file handling, the different commands, and then we'll look at file mounting and unmounting. And finally, we'll conclude by taking a look at certain security aspects and sharing of files. So uh, Solaris is actually a proprietary or a closed source Unix operating system which was developed by Sun Microsystems uh, back in the 1990s. Oracle acquired Solar, uh, Solaris after it acquired the entire company of Sun Microsystems. Uh, so this operating system came to be known as Oracle Solaris. Uh, Solaris is very powerful because it's great with Spark systems. So Spark systems actually stands for Scalable Processor Architecture which is a risk instruction set architecture designed by Sun Microsystems and it also goes very well with Java applications and Oracle database. Okay, so we know what files are. They provide a user interface to users uh, against the data that is being stored in the disk. Uh, so file management actually involves the task of managing these files properly such as storing, naming, accessing, mounting, sharing and handling. So file management is necessary because of these two very obvious reasons. Uh, file management actually helps in efficient organization of data and also helps in data protection and recovery because uh, it is just possible that we have some sensitive data and then we do not want to lose it. A file system is the one that is actually uh, actually does the file management operation. So there are different kinds of file systems. For example, ZFS, Zeta byte file system, NTFS, the one we use in Windows, FAT file allocation table, ext4 and several other file systems. So file systems in Solaris. Now that we know what file systems are, we'll look at how Solaris does, uh, has its own file systems. So Solaris in a broad sense uses the virtual file system allocation architecture. So what this means is that virtual file system allocation architecture is actually a layer over the all the other concrete file systems which actually organizes and combines the other file systems. Uh, the virtual file system architecture also enables kernel to take a handle basic operations such as reading, writing and listing files. And then Oracle supports a lot of file systems which we will classify into three different types. So the first type is actually disk based file system. The second type is network based and the third type is virtual file system. One thing that I would like to emphasize over here is that virtual file system is not the same as virtual file system architecture while the former one actually refers to the layer uh, over all the other file systems virtual file systems are actually a category of file systems that 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 help us you know have specific kernel related information and also might help in increasing throughput and the speed of various operations that are uh, occurring inside the operating system so we'll begin with disk based file systems as the name suggests, these are the file systems which are attached to some physical media such as hard disk or DVDs. And we have five different kinds of uh, disk based file system in uh, Solaris. The first one is ZFS, then we have Unix file system, we have High Syria, we have PC file system and we have universal disk file systems. And for each of these file systems, we have a particular disk like which is a particular kind of physical media it is uh, for which it, it is best suited for. For example, ZFS is well with hard disk, PCFS does good with uh, USB, UDFS with DVD and so on. And here we have a quick description of all these things that we have discussed so far. Uh, let's move on. We'll have next thing, uh, next in our list is network based file system. So as we know that in a network there are several computers. So a server actually serves different clients, uh, provides transfer of data, information, files and everything, all of that. So over there we also will also need file management systems and thus we have two kinds of file management systems over here in Solaris. NFS service stands for network file systems which actually provides distributed resources by sharing them from a server uh, and then mounting them on individual clients. 
and also we have oracle small to medium business service smb service which will actually uh, facilitate sharing to windows and mac os systems and clients uh yeah so now we'll move on to the interesting thing called virtual file systems so uh, even before we go to the definition and other things let us just have an example uh, what virtual file system actually is so we must have noticed that uh, whenever we perform operations let's say we come for perform compilation of a program or maybe we are transferring something over the network there there is a lot of temporary files that are getting formed in the process okay so these temporary files if i write them into a local disk it will take up a lot of time and space so uh, instead of that we have this temporary file system which is a virtual file system so what this file system will do is it will get mounted it will temporarily store all the files that have been generated and thus in, in, improve the throughput of the system so virtual file system will not actually uh, use the disk space so uh, and also they they might also provide a specific kernel information and uh, other facilities for example loopback uh, file system does this also we have process file system that stores a list of all ongoing process when we have swap file system and others so that's all about virtual file systems uh, now moving on we have the zfs so zfs is the default file system uh, for solaris uh, and it's quite powerful because it has several new features in it such as data deduplication data compression etc in our uh, operating systems lab 4 we have seen that deduplication is a very powerful feature which uh, actually uh, for several copies of the same data it does not take as much space but actually stores one of them and then has pointed to other uh, files similarly data compression is actually responsible for compressing data so uh, again uh, in case of zfs we have a root directory and we have a hierarchy in which the files are getting stored so this uh, this is pretty much similar to what we have in the case of linux so it might quite look similar if you are a linux user so we have a root and we have a system folder which has certain other folders in it we have a mount folder we have users uh, home processes etc so each of these folders uh, actually has a certain file system associated with it for example volatile has temporary file systems mount has mount file systems and so on so these file systems are responsible for maintaining the files inside these particular folders uh, and yeah so now we'll move on to file handling uh, now that we have seen so many different kind of file systems the first question that arises is how to know what is the particular file system at a given location or at a given partition of a disk so fs type is that particular command which helps in uh, solving this problem so fs type will actually turn zfs if it means that this particular partition has a zfs file system on it similarly cp command is used to copy and minus r does it recursively that is in a directory all the folders and files inside it are copied move uh, as a smart trick can rename it or maybe can move it to a particular location such is used to create a file and uh, also we have mkdir which makes a directory and rm is used for removing them like rm um, yeah also rmdir actually removes a directory but that has to be an em uh, empty directory but rmdir minus r actually removes all the files and folders inside the directory so again it's a recursive removal uh, and then we have diff also there are other commands so these are pretty much similar to linux again uh, and also since there are so many other commands i have attached a link of docs over here uh, through which you can go and look at other commands yeah moving on we come to the concept of mounting so mounting is actually a process in which the operating system makes files and directories on a storage device available for users to access and this is very crucial in case of in certain particular cases such as the temporary file systems and uh, loopback file systems because they are virtual file systems and they do not exist unless we are actually mounting them so let us have a look at two examples this focus on mounting a zfs file system so we create a zpool first uh, on this particular partition and then zfs list will actually uh, list all the pools that are created so the name was tank and we see that okay the tank pool has got created similarly we can also mount uh, a temporary file system for example here we create a temporary uh, file we actually mount a temporary file system first of all you make a directory uh, which is actually serves as a mount point and then we give the permissions to it because we need to store files inside it and then we assign a size of 50 mb to it from swap space and uh, that pretty much does it mount minus you will actually make sure that i have mounted this uh, temporary file system correctly and unmounting is rather easy uh, we can we just have to use the command u mount and the mount point uh, where the file system has got mounted 
Now we'll come to the last aspect of uh, Solaris. Since Solaris is actually a op enterprise operating system and even Oracle itself is an enterprise company. So what, it, what do I mean by that? It means that the software that we make or the, or the operating system over here in, in this consideration is actually used by organizations. So in such a case, security uh, assumes supreme importance because organizations do have sensitive data in them. So for that purpose, we have access control lists which provide an extra edge of security over the traditional unique system of read, write, execute, which we are all familiar with. ACLs are also seen uh, in module eight of operating system where we know that ACLs are basically uh, tables where in each entry we have the permissions granted to a particular uh, domain of users. And so in that way, we provide an extra layer of security. We have seen that uh, over servers, we can use NFS and then uh, and we can share information. And finally, we can also use the basic audit reporting tool, which will enable us to comprehensively validate uh, and perform uh, for file level checks. With that, we come to the ending of this presentation. Uh, these are the references that uh, I have used. So I have used the Oracle Solaris book. I have used Wikipedia and uh, of course the documentation for the commands of file handling. And finally, the operating system course, which gave a basic idea about file system management, the module six. Uh, I would like to thank you everyone for watching this video. And I'd like to extend special thanks to both of my professors for giving me this wonderful opportunity and uh, for letting me learn a lot. Thank you all.